I met Sidney for the first time in uh, 1977. He probably doesn't remember. I was uh, just, just graduated from college. He didn't give me a job. In fact, Sidney, you, you've never given me a job. And then I get a call, and on the other end of the phone says, Hi, Jamie Foxx. So who's this? This is Oprah. You're blowing it, Jamie Foxx. And Oprah says, OK, you want to you want to meet who you're supposed to meet here? I said, yeah, he's right there. And it was Sidney Poitier. In the glitzy realm of Hollywood, where stars rise and fall like shooting comets, Sidney Poitier stood as a towering figure among black actors. His trailblazing legacy paved the way for countless aspiring talents, serving as a beacon of hope and inspiration. However, even despite his opening doors for future black actors and being an epitome and role model to others, some some black celebrities are working hard to undo all that his presence in Hollywood accomplished, and word on the grapevine suggests that Oprah Winfrey might be one of them. So what exactly is going on? First, let's talk about how Sidney has been an inspiration to many. Denzel Washington's heartfelt tribute to Sidney Poitier at the AFI Life Achievement Awards in 1992 exemplifies the profound impact Poitier had on aspiring actors, particularly within the African-American community. Washington's recollection of his first encounter with Poitier illustrates the profound admiration and respect he held for the legendary actor. I turned around and said, how are you? I said, I'm, I'm Denzel Washington. You don't, you don't know me. I haven't, I haven't done anything. But uh, he was very kind to me. What stands out in Washington's tribute is the emphasis on Poitier's willingness to offer guidance and support without expecting anything in return. Unlike some Hollywood elites who might use their status to maintain exclusivity or to perpetuate a sense of hierarchy, Poitier approached mentoring with generosity and humility. I did what any friend would do, any actor would do. I took out my picture and resume, started begging for a job. He didn't give me a job. In fact, Sidney, you, you've never given me a job. But he did something that was much more important. He gave me his time, his advice. And I can honestly say that the reason I'm up here today is because of Sidney Poitier. Washington's mention of Poitier not offering him a job but instead providing invaluable time and advice highlights Poitier's commitment to fostering talent and creating opportunities without the expectation of personal gain. Poitier's actions demonstrate a departure from the typical gatekeeping behavior seen in many industries, including Hollywood, where access to opportunities often hinges on personal connections or favors owed. By acknowledging Poitier's role in his own success and expressing gratitude for the guidance and example provided, Washington underscores Poitier's commitment to uplifting others in the industry, particularly African-American actors striving to overcome barriers and stereotypes, in contrast to those who might hoard opportunities or withhold advice as a means of maintaining their own status, Poitier's legacy is one of openness, generosity, and genuine support for those following in his footsteps. His willingness to share his time, wisdom, and experiences reflects a spirit of inclusivity and a desire to see others succeed, making him a truly exceptional figure in Hollywood history. However, word on the grapevine suggests that other elites who were close to Sidney, such as Oprah and Quincy Jones, might have tried to corrupt him. Jamie Foxx has been an entertainment mainstay for decades decades now, with an Oscar and a Grammy under his belt as well as a best-selling memoir. But in a recent interview with Access Hollywood's Scott Evans, Fox revealed that his career very nearly took a different turn, until Oprah Winfrey stepped in to give him some advice. In 2005, Fox was riding high from the critical acclaim he garnered for his performance as Ray Charles in the musical biopic Ray, a role for which he would eventually win the Academy Award for Best Actor. But his celebrating had turned into non-stop partying. Winfrey took notice of this and called him up out of the blue. She said, you're blowing it, Fox recalls, because we were just out hanging, we weren't taking the moment seriously. She said, I want to take you somewhere so you can understand the significance of what you're doing. Winfrey took Fox to the home of record producer Quincy Jones, where an impromptu intervention had been set up. Doing an uncanny impersonation of Jones, Fox remembers being told, you've done a great job on Ray, but you've effed everything else up now. You gotta buckle down, baby. Now, Quincy calling Jamie baby is something that many fans found quite creepy, and I'll tell you why. If you have even a tiny bit of interest in Hollywood, you must know Quincy Jones. He is a legendary producer, musician, songwriter, and so on. Thus, he is also given the title of the Black Godfather of the industry. 
Quincy Jones has produced for an impressive list of notable artists during his career, including Frank Sinatra, Aretha Franklin, Rufus and Chaka Khan, and the most famous Michael Jackson. But this is not the only reason he has been hitting the headlines. For decades, S has always been a topic of great buzz on the internet. Let me tell you something. That means Quincy's gay. Quincy might be on, and let me tell you why I think this. It has always been speculated that Quincy Jones forced men into gay relationships in exchange for making them famous and big in Hollywood. Anyway, Fox then revealed that Sidney Poitier was also among them saying, Oprah says, okay, you wanna, you wanna meet who you're supposed to meet here? I said, yeah, he's right there. And it was Sidney Poitier. Poitier then went on to speak to Fox saying, He says, I want to give you one thing. I want to give you responsibility. When I saw your performance, it made me grow too much. What actually made all the difference to Fox was the fact that it was Sidney Poitier's birthday. So I break down, everybody sits me down. It was actually Sidney Poitier's birthday. Wow. They made me understand the significance of it. In any case, despite having him mixed with such shady dealings, Oprah Winfrey has always claimed to be inspired by Poitier's legacy. During 2021 Black History Month, Winfrey opened up to E.T.'s Kevin Frazier about Poitier's legacy and how he laid the groundwork for her and many others within the industry. When I tell you profoundly, I could start weeping right now. I was profoundly, deeply, sincerely moved moved by that moment, Winfrey said, looking back on Poitier's historic Oscar win for Lilies of the Field. At the time, the future talk show host was only 10 years old. We were being called colored people at the time, and I had never seen a colored man look like that or present like that, and I just thought if he could do that, I wonder what I could do, she added, and because he did that, I was able to do what I have been able to do in the world, and every single other black person who followed. It only happened because he was able not just to do that, but to be that. It's what he represented, his dignity, integrity, presence, grace, sense of honor, choice of characters only doing, and choosing roles that were going to reflect the best of what a black person could be in the world. Looking back on his filmography and what Poitier achieved as an actor, especially during the civil rights movement, Winfrey points out that beneath the surface of all of his work, underlying all of his work was the cry for, the plea for, the working towards racial justice in the world in a way that he was able to humanize black people. She added, and that was his intention and his goal. Poitier, Winfrey noted, was the person who opened the door for black people in Hollywood and on screen, from film to TV. His very being and presence in the world, not just as an actor but as a father and as a human being, has laid the groundwork for people like me and generations to come that will benefit from his work, she said. There would be no Kevin Frazier sitting up on Entertainment Tonight without a Sidney Poitier. We're part of the chain, but he was the first link. Winfrey knew Poitier for many years, which turned into weekly calls she coined, Sundays with Sidney. She told E.T. it was one of the greatest joys in her life, especially for the 10-year-old version of herself. I not only got to meet him but got to know him in such a way that he enhanced my life, she gushed. So I mean love him, just love him. Now many can't help but wonder, if Poitier was Oprah's mentor, then why did she not emulate his kindness and openness to creating opportunities and opening doors to other up-and-coming black actors? If anything, Oprah has been doing the very opposite of Poitier. You see, just recently, Monique stirred up the water again and demanded an apology from Oprah for allegedly blackballing her. For Oprah Winfrey, you owe me an apology. And then we have Taraji P. Henson, who almost walked out of an Oprah-produced film because she was being underpaid. And you gotta negotiate that fight tooth and nail to get what you made the last time when, where's my raise? I haven't, I haven't seen a raise in my income since Proud Mary. In any case, despite being surrounded by controversial Hollywood figures, Sidney Poitier lived an incredible life. Poitier was born in Miami on February 20, 1927. His parents, Evelyn and Reginald Poitier, were from Cat Island in the Bahamas. They were only visiting Florida to sell produce in between Reginald's job as a cab driver. Poitier was actually born two months premature and was so frail that his parents stayed in Miami for three extra months to make sure that their baby would survive. Poitier returned to Miami when he was 15 years old. A brother of his had moved there beforehand, raising a large family. Poitier stayed with them until he was 16 when he moved to New York City. Contrary to what some have assumed, Poitier's name doesn't originate from Haiti. 
Originally introduced to England during the Norman Conquest, the name was brought to Cat Island by Charles Leonard Poitier, an English plantation owner who sailed to Cat Island from Jamaica. The surname was passed on through the dozens of slaves that came with the plantation owner, and the name stayed on in Cat Island since then. When Poitier moved to New York City, he took work as a dishwasher in various establishments. While he did this, he also learned how to read for the first time in his life. A friendly waiter would regularly sit with him during this time and helped him read the local newspapers. Poitier's journey in the entertainment industry began with challenges. Despite joining the American End Theater, his early performances were met with rejection from audiences. His inability to sing, a rarity among black actors of his time, posed a significant obstacle. Determined to overcome these setbacks, Poitier embarked on a mission to hone his acting skills and shed his Bahamian accent. For six months, he immersed himself in rigorous training, modeling his speech pattern after radio personality Norman Brokenshire. Persistence paid off when Poitier secured a breakthrough opportunity on his second attempt at the theater. He landed a leading role in the Broadway production of Lysistrata, albeit the play's short-lived run. However, this stint earned him an invitation to understudy for Anna Lucasta, marking a pivotal moment in his burgeoning career. It was during this period that Poitier forged a friendship with fellow performer Harry Belafonte, cementing connections within the industry. In 1947, Poitier became a founding member of the Committee for the N in the Arts, CNA, aligning himself with a group dedicated to addressing class and racial exploitation from a left-wing perspective. His involvement extended to serving as vice chair of the organization in the early 1950s. Poitier's commitment to progressive causes, evident in his participation in events like the N History Festival, drew the attention of authorities and contributed to his blacklisting for a period. Despite facing repercussions for his political affiliations, Poitier remained steadfast in his principles. Refusing to sign a loyalty oath even when asked in connection with potential film roles, he demonstrated unwavering integrity and stood by his convictions. Through his resilience and unwavering commitment to his craft, Poitier emerged as not only a trailblazing actor, but also a symbol of resilience and moral fortitude in the face of adversity. By late 1949, Sidney Poitier found himself at a critical juncture in his burgeoning career. Faced with a pivotal decision between pursuing leading roles on stage or delving into the realm of filmmaking, Poitier was presented with an offer from none other than Daryl F. Zanuck to star in the film No Way Out, 1950. This decision marked a turning point in Poitier's trajectory as an actor, as his portrayal of a doctor tending to a white bigot in the film garnered significant attention and acclaim. This breakthrough role opened doors to more diverse and prominent opportunities, defying the limited scope of roles typically available to African-American actors at the time. Poitier's star continued to rise as he ventured into new territories, both geographically and artistically. In 1951, he embarked on a journey to South Africa alongside fellow actor Canada Lee to star in the film adaptation of Cry, the beloved country. His performance in this poignant tale further solidified his status as a formidable talent in the industry. Poitier's versatility was showcased once again in 1955's Blackboard Jungle, where he portrayed Gregory W. Miller, a member of a rebellious high school class, with unparalleled skill and depth. Collaborating with esteemed directors further enriched Poitier's artistic journey. Working with director William Wellman on Goodbye My Lady, 1956, left an indelible mark on Poitier, who revered Wellman for his profound humanity and sensitivity behind the camera. This experience would later influence Poitier's own directorial approach when he assumed the helm for Buck and the Preacher in 1971. The pinnacle of Poitier's career came in 1958, when he starred alongside Tony Curtis in Stanley Kramer's The Defiant Ones. The film's critical and commercial success elevated Poitier to new heights, earning him widespread acclaim and recognition. Poitier's groundbreaking performance in The Defiant Ones not only garnered him accolades, but also made history as he became the first black male actor to receive a competitive Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. Poitier's impact extended beyond the silver screen, resonating deeply with audiences on Broadway as well. His portrayal of Walter Lee Younger in A Raisin in the Sun, alongside Ruby Dee, captivated theatergoers and critics alike, marking a significant moment in American theater history. 
Whitey's commitment to authenticity and excellence earned him a Tony Award nomination for Best Actor in a Play, further solidifying his status as a luminary in the performing arts landscape. In 1959, Poitier ventured into the realm of musical cinema with Porgy and Bess, starring alongside Dorothy Dandridge. His portrayal of Porgy earned him a Golden Globe Award nomination for Best Actor in a Motion Picture Musical or Comedy, showcasing his versatility and range as a performer. As the 1960s dawned, Poitier's influence continued to grow, both on and off the screen. His participation in the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom in 1963 underscored his commitment to social justice and equality. Poitier's presence at the forefront of the civil rights movement mirrored his on-screen persona, characterized by dignity, integrity, and unwavering resolve. Throughout the tumultuous decade, Poitier continued to challenge stereotypes and defy expectations with each role he undertook. From the introspective Virgil Tibbs in In the Heat of the Night, 1967, to the pioneering teacher in To Sir with Love, 1967, Poitier imbued his characters with depth, nuance, and humanity, captivating audiences and critics alike. Despite accolades and acclaim, Poitier remained cognizant of the limitations imposed upon him as a black actor in Hollywood. While he aspired for more diverse and complex roles, he grappled with the responsibility of being a trailblazer in an industry fraught with racial barriers. Poitier's refusal to conform to stereotypes and his unwavering commitment to authenticity set him apart as a beacon of inspiration for generations of actors to come. As the 1960s drew to a close, Poitier's legacy was firmly cemented as a pioneer, a trailblazer, and a cultural icon. In the annals of cinematic history, few characters have left as indelible a mark as Virgil Tibbs, portrayed masterfully by Sidney Poitier in the seminal film In the Heat of the Night. This iconic role not only solidified Poitier's status as a luminary in the industry, but also served as the catalyst for two sequels, They Call Me Mr. Tibbs and The Organization. In 1972, Poitier embarked on a new chapter in his illustrious career, making his feature film directorial debut with the western Buck and the Preacher. In addition to directing, Poitier also starred in the film alongside fellow icons Harry Belafonte and Ruby Dee. This foray into directing marked a significant milestone for Poitier, signaling his prowess behind the camera as well as in front of it. Poitier's directorial journey continued with A Warm December in 1973, a poignant romantic drama in which he also starred alongside Esther Anderson. Beyond his directorial endeavors, Poitier co-founded the first artist production company alongside luminaries Barbara Streisand and Paul Newman. This groundbreaking venture empowered actors to develop and produce their own projects, underscoring Poitier's commitment to fostering creativity and autonomy within the industry. Collaborating with first artists, Poitier directed and starred in a series of financially successful comedy films including Uptown Saturday Night 1974, Let's Do It Again 1975, and A Piece of the Action 1977, all of which showcased his comedic prowess alongside co-star Bill Cosby. However, it was Stir Crazy 1980, directed by Sidney Poitier and starring Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder, that emerged as a true blockbuster solidifying Poitier's reputation as a director of immense talent and commercial success. Poitier's later career saw him continue to push boundaries and defy expectations, both as an actor and director. In 1985, he directed Fast Forward, followed by the family comedy Ghost Dad in 1990, starring Cosby. Poitier's versatility was further evidenced in his diverse range of roles, from the action-packed Shoot to K, 1988, to the riveting thriller Sneakers, 1992, alongside Robert Redford and Dan Aykroyd. Throughout the 1990s, Poitier continued to captivate audiences with his compelling performances in television movies and miniseries, earning critical acclaim and accolades for his nuanced portrayals. Notable projects during this period include Separate But Equal, 1991, To Sir With Love 2, 1996, and Mandela and De Klerk, 1997, for which he received Emmy nominations and a Golden Globe nomination. In recognition of his unparalleled contributions to American cinema, Poitier was awarded the Honorary Academy Award in 2002. His legacy was further honored at the 86th Academy Awards in 2014, where he received a standing ovation and heartfelt gratitude from Angelina Jolie 
for his enduring impact on Hollywood. In 2021, the Academy paid tribute to Poitier by dedicating the lobby of the new Academy Museum of Motion Pictures in Los Angeles in his honor, cementing his status as a true icon of the silver screen. Beyond his illustrious career in entertainment, Poitier also made significant contributions to diplomacy and philanthropy. From 1995 to 2003, he served as a member of the board of directors of the Walt Disney Company. Additionally, Poitier served as ambassador from the Bahamas to Japan from 1997 to 2007, concurrently holding the position of ambassador to UNESCO from 2002 to 2007. Meanwhile, Sidney Poitier's personal life was as rich and complex as his illustrious career, marked by love, family, and enduring connections. His journey in the realm of relationships and parenthood is a testament to the depth of his character and the bonds that defined him. Poitier's first marriage to Juanita Hardy, which began on April 29, 1950, and lasted until 1965, was a foundational chapter in his life. Despite the dissolution of their marriage, Poitier and Hardy shared the joys and challenges of raising a family together. Their union brought forth four daughters, Beverly, Pamela, Sherry, and Gina, whose presence would shape Poitier's life in profound ways. In 1956, Poitier established roots in Mount Vernon, Westchester County, New York, laying down foundations for his family's future. It was in the picturesque town of Stuyvesant, New York, nestled along the Hudson River, that Poitier and Hardy raised their children, creating a home filled with love, laughter, and cherished memories. However, alongside the stability of family life, Poitier's personal journey took unexpected turns, including a nine-year affair with actress Diane Carroll, beginning in 1959. This chapter in Poitier's life underscored the complexities of love and desire, revealing the human vulnerabilities that existed beneath his stoic exterior. In 1976, Poitier embarked on a new chapter of his personal life, marrying Joanna Shimkus, a Canadian actress with whom he shared a deep connection. Their union, which commenced on January 23, 1976, endured until Poitier's passing, serving as a testament to the enduring power of love and companionship. Poitier and Shimkus welcomed two daughters, Annika and Sidney Tamiya, into their lives, enriching their family with new bonds of kinship and affection. The blending of their families created a tapestry of love and unity, reflecting Poitier's commitment to fostering meaningful connections and nurturing familial ties. In addition to his six daughters, Poitier's legacy extended to his grandchildren and great-grandchildren, who brought joy and laughter into his life. Their presence served as a constant reminder of the enduring legacy he had built and the profound impact he had on generations to come. Sadly, on January 6, 2022, Poitier died at his home in Beverly Hills, California, at the age of 94. His death was confirmed by Fred Mitchell, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Bahamas. According to a copy of his death certificate obtained by TMZ, the cause of death was cardiopulmonary failure, with Alzheimer's disease and prostate cancer listed as underlying causes. Upon Poitier's death, many released statements honoring him, including President Joe Biden, who wrote in part, with unflinching grandeur and poise, his singular warmth, depth, and stature on screen, Sidney helped open the hearts of millions and change the way America saw itself. Former President Barack Obama paid tribute to Poitier, calling him a singular talent who epitomized dignity and grace. Michelle Obama, Bill Clinton, and Hillary Clinton also released statements. Many in the entertainment industry also paid tribute to Poitier, including Martin Scorsese, who wrote, For years, the spotlight was on Sidney Poitier. He had a vocal precision and physical power and grace that at moments seemed almost supernatural. Oprah also paid tribute to her mentor. She took to Instagram to share her thoughts on the late actor, whom she has openly regarded as a confidant and guide for many years. For me, the greatest of the great trees has fallen, Sidney Poitier. My honor to have loved him as a mentor, friend, brother, confidant, wisdom teacher, she captioned a photo of the two together, the utmost highest regard and praise for his most magnificent, gracious, eloquent life. I treasured him, I adored him, he had an enormous soul I will forever cherish. Blessings to Joanna and his world of beautiful daughters. In any case, Sidney Poitier's legacy reverberates through the corridors of Hollywood, inspiring countless black actors to shatter barriers and seize their rightful place in the spotlight. While some have ascended to positions of influence, mirroring the gatekeepers of old, others, like Denzel Washington, remain steadfast in their commitment to honoring Poitier's trailblazing path. Despite
Despite the allure of power and privilege, Washington chooses to emulate Poitiers' humility and generosity, embodying the spirit of a true trailblazer. In a world where success often breeds indifference, Washington's unwavering dedication to Poitiers' principles serves as a beacon of hope for future generations of black actors. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.